I'm Jenna Miscavige. I was born and raised in Scientology. I left when I was 21 years old and wrote a book about it. My uncle, David Miscavige, is the leader of Scientology. And this is my YouTube channel. Hi guys, so today I'm taking a little break from talking about my Scientology story um, just because, um, you know, the whole point about leaving a cult or the whole point of what is bad about being in a cult is that you don't get to experience a normal life. You don't get to experience the everyday joys and pleasures that other people do and it follows that after leaving a cult the best thing you can do or the way to put your life back together is by experiencing the things that you couldn't have experienced when you were still in there and building a joyful life for yourself and um, one of the ways that I do that for myself is by doing the things I love and through doing those things I get to learn more and more about myself and so in order for it to be sustainable for me to expose Scientology and talk about my story, I have to intersperse it with other things that I love doing. Otherwise it just becomes so much. It becomes too much for me and I, I enjoy doing it, but I want it to be sustainable. And um, also, you know, that's who I am and how I grew up in Scientology is a huge part of who I am and doing this is who I am now. And so that's changed a little bit since I've been out of Scientology. And so that's why I do that's why I do these videos as well. And also many people who are subscribed to me, they've also been in cults, um, in difficult relationships, in high control groups. And I just feel like doing fun and nice things together that help us move on with our life and help us heal and help um, add in the column of good experiences in life help us all just to be happier, which is sort of the goal and is the innate problem with being in a cult. Um, so yeah, so today I'm going to make my favorite avocado toast and also the pickled onions that go on top of it. Um, so we start with, whoopsie, a red onion. And I have the recipe here, but I'll put it in the description. And so, um, we need some water, some hot water. So I'm gonna boil some. And I'm just gonna get that going while I'm chopping. Okay, and here's the jar that we're gonna make the pickled onions in. All right, so we're gonna start with one red onion. And I got so many good tips on one of my last videos about how to make yourself not cry while cutting onions. And I have failed miserably to either put it in the freezer or wash it off. Maybe I'll try washing it off and seeing if it makes it better, but I really wish I had done those. I want to follow those awesome tips and tricks. I just didn't think of it before. I rinsed it, so hopefully it helps. I'm gonna try rinsing it again. See if I rinse it throughout, if it will help. I mean, so far so good. one more time and rinse the knife. Okay, now I'm just gonna 
slice this really as thinly as I possibly can because these aren't going to get chopped up later. And so I like if you have a mandolin and you can trust yourself with it, then this would be a great place to use it. It's just that I worry that I'll chop my fingers off with a mandolin and so I don't. And so I'm just slicing them really as thinly as I can. I'll show you in a second how thin they are. This is how thinly I'm slicing, but I'm gonna cut them in half this way um, so that when I make my avocado toast, it's not like a big string of an onion there. Actually, I wound up doing it in thirds. Okay, I'm starting, my eyes are starting to hurt. I'm gonna rinse off the cutting board and the other onion and see if it helps. I'm so sensitive to this, you guys. What's crazy is that immediately when I put it under the water, it feels better. I'm gonna try to get through this as quickly as possible. amazing how when you don't want to chop your fingers off, the onion tries to blind you. <laughs> okay. All right. We're through the hard part. are dying but there's the last of the onion so let's just put it in the jar and the torture part will be over and I think red onions are what are mostly used for this because they turn the prettiest pink color when they're pickled and they have just a really strong flavor okay we're all in the jar oh my god I'm dying me looking like a psychotic vampire. Here's the onions we have. So this is one red onion thinly sliced. And then we are going to add 75 grams of boiling water. So I'll just put this on the scale, zero it out. And then here's the boiling water. There we go. And I will add a teaspoon and a half of honey. I like these little bears because the honey doesn't get all crystallized and they're just so dang cute. And so even though I sometimes get the other honey because it's easier to use in recipes because you can just scoop it out, I don't know. I mean, they're so cute and my daughter likes them. Okay, so a teaspoon and a half of honey and um, a half teaspoon of salt. And some chili flakes. I'm 
I'm just gonna add a pinch, but I really, I'm just gonna add a pinch, but I really like chili flakes, so I don't know, maybe I'll do two pinches. Okay, and now I'm going to add 125 grams of apple cider vinegar. It's a little cloudy at the bottom, so I'm just gonna shake it up. And between this and the hot water, it will, um, it will break down the honey. It will melt it or disintegrate it. Okay, 125. Here's what it looks like right now. And I am just gonna mix it up. It already smells so good. So I'm gonna put the jar or the lid on top of this, and mix it up, and basically you let it sit on your countertop until it just reaches room temperature, and then you put it in the fridge. Uh, so my favorite thing to make with pickled onions is avocado toast, and I basically there's a coffee shop that I go to that has the yummiest avocado toast, and I reverse engineered it and I made my own recipe and it starts with some sourdough bread so I have like a leftover like half of a loaf here so just do a nice big slice and I will toast this now so while we're waiting for that to toast um I want to make a matcha latte um, for my son. We're about to drive to Irvine because he does cross country and he's about to be in a race so I'm gonna make him a fun little snack before we leave and we all love matcha. Um, we got this little um, bowl and whisk when we were in Japan and now we just like love using it and matcha is, is really healthy. Green tea is one of the healthiest things you can drink and so I have some every day kind of as a snack and it's just so yummy. All right, so these, and I also use like a little sifter thing and this little scoop. So first I'm gonna boil a little bit of water for the matcha. And while that's boiling, I just put the sieve inside here, the matcha bowl. Make sure the matcha bowl is really dry because otherwise the sieve will get all blocked up. And I have this matcha powder. I get like, I get expensive good matcha powder because I just think that it's the best for you. I don't get any matcha mix or anything like that that has sugar or something like that in it. And you can see that it's like, bright, bright green. So that color just shows like antioxidants and um, all of the yummy goodness. And I just do one scoop per cup. And I make sure I seal it up nice and tight so the oxygen doesn't get to it and then I put it in the refrigerator. Okay and then I literally just sift it like this 
And this is just so that there isn't any clumps in the tea. When we were in Japan, we went to this little tea house and they made the matcha right in front of us. And this is how they did it. And so just like every time I make it, it reminds me of our trip to Japan. And being in Japan was super cool. And everyone there, even the old people, were really healthy and fit. And they walked for, like, I, I feel like they were more fit and healthy than I was. They could walk for really long periods of time. And so, I don't know, if they do this, then I'm going to try it at least. All right, and so that's how it looks. So it's all smooth. So once I add the water um, and I use the whisk, it will just like mix up together smoothly. Now I only add for this about like, I don't know, I would say, um, here, let me have a look. Okay, I would say about a quarter cup or less. to see about how much is in there and then I mix it up with the whisk until it's all incorporated it smells good it smells grassy okay make sure I mix everything in This is a little cup I made. It's the perfect matcha latte size. So I'm just gonna pour this in. And because it's for my son, I'm just gonna put a teeny tiny bit of honey, very little. I don't put any honey in mine. Use that. Okay, and I'm just going to mix it up to make sure that the honey actually melts and gets homogenized in there. Okay, so I mean, you can use whatever kind of milk you like. You can use regular milk if you like that. I some I don't use it for my um, matchas just because it hurts my stomach a tiny bit. And so I usually use almond milk or oat milk or I've been using this sunflower milk. I don't know, I just, I like the taste of it. I love sunflower butter. I love um, sunflower seeds. Oop, that's the toast. Um, And so I just, um, I don't know, I love this stuff, but I'm not gonna say that it's healthier because it is like something that's more processed, but this is the one place where I'm like, I'm just gonna use what I like and be fine with it. All right. So now if I want this to be cold, I just pour this right in there and then I add a couple cubes of ice and mix it up and that's it. This one, I want it to be warm, so I'm actually gonna, um, froth it in the espresso machine back there. I'm just gonna mix this up a little more. All right, and it gets, it like gets bigger. So I maybe add like a half cup at most, maybe a little more, you can't have too much. All right. Different milks froth up differently. This one doesn't froth up quite as much, but I'm just gonna pour it in here. It turns this really pretty 
light green color with a little bit of foam on top. And then I'll take this and sprinkle a tiny bit of matcha powder on top. All right, there you go, there's that. And now I'm gonna get the toast. All right, here's the sourdough toast and I'm not gonna lie, the secret ingredient, the actual secret ingredient in this recipe is butter. It's what actually makes it taste good, more than probably anything else that's in it. So I'm gonna put lots and lots of butter. And I will let that butter um, soften up while I slice my avocado. I have a half here that I use the other half for my lunch. So, just slice this up nice and thin. I should have softened butter, but I don't even bother trying to spread the butter when it's like hard as a rock. I just wait for it to soften on the bread. Okay, this will give you an idea as to how much butter I use. All right, let's put the avocado on here. Try to fan it out nicely so it looks nice and pretty, but it doesn't always work. It looks pretty nice today. Okay. And now I'm gonna go get our onions. I feel like you can't see it in the camera, but they turn this really pretty pink color. And so I just spoon some on top of the avocado. In the coffee shop where I get this, in my opinion, they put a little too much onion so I try to do a little bit less. I think I should have let these pickle for longer, but it will still be delicious. Something about like the, the pickling juice of the onions like cuts through the fat of the avocado and just makes it taste so yummy. Okay, it looks so pretty, the pink and the green together. And then I put some salt flakes on top. A giant container of salt flakes. And then I actually use everything seasoning. Mm, it smells so good. And it's just so delicious looking. Mm. And I'm gonna cut it in half for my son because 
They don't do that at the coffee shop then. I make a huge mess. All right, let me get a little closer. All right, here we go. Delicious avocado toast and a matcha. I will put the whole recipe um, in the description and I hope you guys like this as much as I do. And I'll also have some more recipes in the future that use the pickled onion because I make a really good sandwich with them on focaccia and I still have to, I still have to do the focaccia recipe. All right guys, well thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and don't forget to check out Sins of Scientology. And if you haven't already read my book, you can find it on Amazon. It's called Beyond Belief, My Secret Life Inside Scientology and My Harrowing Escape. Bye. Archie. Archie. Could you come here? Yeah. Do you want this? Sure. Wait, wait. That's still on, but it's not live or anything. Okay. You want to eat it on the camera? Sure, just a bite or something. Yeah, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Mm. Oh, well. That one of yours. Yeah, of course. And I made you a matcha, too. Oh, yeah. And then after that, we go. Yes. So it's still recording, but we don't have to use it. And also, I didn't pick all the onions for as long as I wanted. I like how your head is cut off. Is it good? It's disgusting. It is? It's horrible. Really? It's absolutely horrible. Is it really? No, it's good.